Trump will be the Republican nominee for president, even if he is convicted of a felony before the nomination process is completed, and will likely receive more than 75 million votes in November, even if he is convicted of multiple felonies prior to the election. That is really sad. It would not have been possible in the United States before the creation of the Trump cult and its takeover of what used to be known as the Republican Party, which is no longer the conservative party. If Trump loses to Biden in November, he will not accept defeat. He will never accept defeat, even if he lost in a landslide. And he will burn the House down rather than accepting a loss like any other candidate before him. Nor will Trump ever accept any blame that his own conduct justified the criminal cases. All of the above are already crystal clear. Trump will blame the criminal prosecutions and voter fraud if he loses the election in November, and he will stoke his supporters into committing more violence in response. He has already claimed over and over again that the only reason for the criminal charges is that Biden is using the justice system to interfere in the 2024 election, or that the charges are brought because he is leading Biden in the polls. In response to the appellate court decision refusing to grant him immunity for alleged crimes committed while he was president, Trump said that there would be bedlam if he lost the election because of a criminal conviction and refused to answer a question about whether he would urge his followers to avoid committing crimes in response. In Trump's America, where facts do not matter and never will, the Trump voters will not ask themselves very simple questions that would cause a rational person to turn against Trump. Why did Trump refuse to turn over documents marked as classified in response to the grand jury subpoena? If his response had been what one would expect from a law-abiding citizen, the documents would have been turned over immediately in response to the subpoena. But that is not what Trump elected to do. It was his own personal decision to refrain from complying with the subpoena. Instead, he decided to keep over 100 documents with classification markings that were clearly called for by the grand jury subpoena. And there is significant evidence that he took further, further steps to obstruct compliance with the subpoena. Simply complying with the subpoena from the start would have avoided the criminal charges but he chose a course that put him in legal jeopardy for convictions of multiple crimes. I'm sure his attorneys told him that he needed to comply with the grand jury subpoena or risk criminal prosecution, but that advice was ignored. Similarly, in the felonies charged in the federal and state election interference cases, Trump could have avoided these charges by accepting, simply accepting the election results after exhausting all of his court challenges, which he lost. Instead, he chose to commit unlawful, extrajudicial acts that were designed to prevent Biden from becoming president. And all of those acts are well documented, and anyone can view the evidence. But tens of millions choose to avoid contact with any fact that contradicts a cherished reality creation or Trump's false and misleading statements and narratives. The D.C. Circuit gave Trump's lawyers until next Monday to file a motion to stay the insurrection case now pending in the D.C. federal court. If an appeal and motion to stay is filed by then, the D.C. Circuit is not filed by then, the D.C. Circuit will send the case back to the district court for trial. In that case, the, the trial could happen in about two months. It would probably take four to six weeks, according to most estimates. Many lawyers with Supreme Court experience believe that the court will not accept the case for appeal and will not grant a stay. I would personally view it as more probable than not that they will accept the, the case and issue a stay of the lower court proceeding, while imposing an expedited briefing and oral argument schedule. The court will end up affirming the bulletproof decision made by the uh, uh, district uh, D.C. Circuit Court panel 
but the delay possibly intended by some justice voting to accept a petition for review could easily end up causing the trial to be postponed until after the election. The purpose is to create delay whenever possible in all the criminal cases pending against Trump. And I'm talking about what his lawyers are doing. 